What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Wolfcryer here, and let's talk Diablo Immortal. All right, so a few things I need to get out of the way right off the bat before we start this video. This video is not about the monetization in Diablo Immortal, and if you are coming here looking for me to bash this game or somehow think that two-year-old phone memes are the only proper response to Diablo Immortal, you might want to find another video, unfortunately. And this game is meant for iPhone 8 or higher, but I was able to get it to run on an iPhone 6s. Yes, I know I need an upgrade when it comes to my phone, but Diablo Immortal runs pretty smooth on it. The only time that I ran into FPS issues and the like was when I was using the phone to actually play the game and record gameplay footage at the same time. Other than that, the only drawback for me personally was the 6S's notoriously bad battery life. That and the smaller screen. So how is Diablo Immortal? It looks and feels like an updated version of Diablo 3, which does mean that if you're a Diablo 2 purist who thinks the franchise died after Diablo 2 for whatever reason, this might not be your cup of tea. But as a Diablo 3 player myself, I feel right at home in this game. The environments are graphically pretty damn nice looking, and they help the storyline flow from area to area. Several times during my initial playthrough, I found myself taking extra time in certain areas to take a look around and gander at the beauty of this game's environments. And I gotta say, it looks pretty good. The monsters also feel right at home, both old and new, fitting in with the Diablo 3 aesthetic, but with new foes to vanquish as well, and returning favorites such as Leoric, the Countess, and Bale, as well as my arch nemesis, the Fetishes, which I will never forgive for killing off my high-level druid in Diablo 2. The storyline also flows very well, although personally I did find that the earlier parts were much easier to follow along as they were voiced very well, and once reaching that portion of the game where the voice acting wasn't yet implemented, I did have a bit of a struggle trying to keep my focus on reading the 6S's very small screen. However, it was also very good to see Deckard Cain back within the Diablo franchise, even if he was only about a quarter inch tall. Gameplay-wise, the skills were very responsive, even with these big gigantic fingers of mine playing on such a small screen, especially as someone who does not play games on my mobile device. I was kind of expecting to have more of an issue with the controls and that didn't happen. It only took a few minutes of playing before I really got the hang of it enough where it actually felt natural to me. Your skills level up with your character as you play and can be further augmented by your gear choices. Now, the legendary items within the game are pretty awesome, as they tend to change up those abilities and can change up your gameplay and decision making as well, which was pretty amazing and something I'd actually like to see progress even further in both Diablo Immortal and Diablo 4, during their own respective developments. Other items, however, feel even flatter than their current counterparts in Diablo 3. I found myself sorting through rare and magic items simply by whether they had a green up arrow within their icon on the inventory sheet, signifying that they were indeed an upgrade. The lack of any meaningful affixes for the most part has been brought up by other content creators as well, and appears to be something that Wyatt Chang and the development team for DI will look into bumping up after this technical alpha. Once reaching Endgame, there are already a myriad of things to do from endless rifts, think greater rifts in Diablo 3, challenge rifts, which is the competitive leaderboard-driven content complete with its own rewards, including 
specific one-time rewards for the first player to reach certain milestones, which is a pretty cool concept all on its own. Then there are bounties, which you can do 12 per day for specific rewards, as well as dungeon farming, which can be fun to engage with, much more so than boss hunting in Diablo 3, which is more or less a waste of time. The upgrade system within Diablo Immortal seems much deeper than I had originally thought and allows you to increase the stats on your gear, gems, charms, and all of that, and is a necessity in progressing within challenge rifts and onto higher difficulties. To the best of my knowledge, currently in the game, the difficulty settings are pretty much normal, Hell 1 and Hell 2. One of the other major aspects in Diablo Immortal is the Paragon system, and Paragon in Diablo 3 is something of a contentious issue for me personally. I'm not a fan of the Paragon system in that game, but I also recognize that players who play more deserve to benefit from that increased amount of playtime. I'm not against that, but I am not personally happy with the current non-stop grind of Paragon in Diablo 3 that only seems to benefit those who can amass thousands of uh, Paragon levels. Diablo Immortal's Paragon system, however, does away with pretty much all of my issues with Paragon. The system is very well done, allowing you to place points from your Paragon levels into different specialization trees, netting you permanent increases to your character within each tree, but allowing you to also set one of those specialization trees as an active Paragon spec, which allows you to gain specific progressive benefits from that particular tree. And you can only have one of these trees active at any one time, hence still giving that purpose to gaining Paragon levels without it being this never-ending stat increase. And since you can only have one active spec at any given time, it also tends to level the playing field a little bit, which is pretty good for those more casual players, which allows the game to focus more on skill-based competitiveness when it comes to those greater rifts rather than just time-based which I think is pretty damn cool. I am still continuing to dive deeper with Diablo Immortal while I can during this technical alpha, but so far I'm enjoying it quite a bit. It's fun and I can't wait to see what comes from the future from this installment of the Diablo franchise. I'm having a blast playing it and it's very helpful for me personally as a lot of times Due to my leg issues, I have to have my legs elevated. I can't be at my PC all the time. And it's a great way to play some Diablo. But, all right, ladies and gentlemen, that's all for me for now. Thank you so very much for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. I always greatly appreciate it. Don't forget to hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. And let me know down in that comment section down below your thoughts on Diablo Immortal from what you've seen so far your thoughts on this video and whether or not you're going to be playing Diablo Immortal once it's available to the general public. All right, once again, thank you all so very much and you all have a fantastic day. Peace.